academic historical study, a claimed cornerstone of modern civilization and our understanding of antiquity. Incredible lost treasures rediscovered, particularly during Darwin's era pushing the field of historical study, especially regarding our own origin, into the forefront of public interest. One of which, initially coined the survival of the fittest. It is ironic, however, that later Charles would himself come to realize his assumptions of non-design wrong. Yet far too late to protect his musings from greedy talents, although due to the lack of resulting substantiating evidence, has, regardless, slowly transformed into an alternative to classical religion, one without a god. The fatal flaw in Darwin's theory of evolution is that it remains just that, a theory, never demonstrated in a controlled environment, namely Earth. With predictable and repeatably observed results, yet this justification for this seemingly agenda-driven promotion of the theory itself could be perceived as a first-draft antithesis to a god or design, for the proof remains absent to this day. A tangled web they weave. Harnessing the variety found within nature and often subsequent similarities within the animal kingdom. Who, due to environmental changes, were often forced to adapt, wheeled around as examples of that which the theory depends on. The proof. The magical link. The species hop. A display of the power of adaptation, nothing more. The hairless apes. Explained evolutionarily as due to reproductive preference for apes with less hair. There is no evidence for this claim, no mention of any environmental benefits or negative consequential factors of its result. Darwin's Finches long exhibited as proofs, along with the moth depletion during the Industrial Revolution, fall into no evolutionary category. What we are witnessing is extinction and natural selection, not a strong argument within the evolutionist's armory. Again, these remarkable finches remained finches. There is no denial that there is an incredibly diverse world around us, with millions of subspecies. But this does not prove that they share a single ancestor. Even fossil records support this. They show, during the Cambrian explosion in particular, the sudden unexplained arrival of complex life forms who seemingly just appeared in our oceans about 550 million years ago. There contained a small set of separate phyla, the original species, a group of separate genealogical individuals, now a half billion years old, 
Yet no others, or more importantly, any separation or the crucial cross-species hop, has ever been discovered. The Convolution of Adaptation A competition for resources. The fossils we are permitted to see show that life forms on our planet can be, and were, once far bigger. Yet an event, a driving mechanism, triggered a demonstration of natural selection, survival of the fittest, best suited, or more specifically, a mass extinction at its most rampant. For although we know birds, thanks to MRI scans, are biologically dinosaurs. They could have only been small scavenging species, the world becoming unsustainable for large creatures. The genealogical similarity argument. Although iterated in an earlier video, Every living thing on this planet shares something nearly identical, but each is unique. DNA, the building blocks of life, like the paint on a canvas, diversity is only limited by the complexity of what can be made with said materials. Which would explain why you, I, all humans, share nearly identical DNA – Darwin, Einstein, Newton, and so on we all share near-identical chemical makeup down to a microscopic level. Yet most compellingly, we all also share about 50% genealogical similarities with a banana. For life to live on our planet, we must all share many things which lay in abundance. Yet interestingly, the living kingdom has a group not singular ancestry never leaping or crossing phyla. The Eyes of an Ape the stunning biodiversity we see on our planet, from said phyla, facing and subsequently overcoming challenges faced by each species, and thanks to the immense complexity of the universe, we get to witness awe-inspiring variety and skills, mistakenly perceived as appearing from nowhere. Techniques and abilities pressed out by design, Newton's third law, and the ultimate pursuit of a perfect effect. A reality whose purpose, direction, or indeed causation, thus far, we are yet to discover. For if indeed a single-celled living organism was the creator of all creatures great and small, where did their own origins arise? Metamorphosis. From the very hungry caterpillar to the beautiful butterfly, this is supposed with no intelligence, totally by chance. It pulpates. It becomes a chrysalis, internally turning to goo, rearranging within said cocoon, reappearing as a fragile creature who had managed to master the power of flying subsequently successfully procreating, mathematically proven as so unlikely by chance as preposterous to accept as the case. Yet let's not forget the frog, who too created cycles which mathematically are absurd to claim as occurring simply from trial and error, only extinction. Aquatic gill-breathing amphibians growing powerful limbs, capable of living for long periods out of water? Which environment on this planet so forgiving as to permit such unexplainable developments all by chance?
apes enter Stone Age. Let's ignore ravens, who have been using stones as tools to do simply incredibly intelligent things for many, many years. Eagles, along with many other birds of prey, witnessed for millennia dropping turtles, etc. onto specific rocky outcrops. Animals have been using tools for as long as recorded history, much like us. If there was no one around to hear it, did the Big Bang make a sound? Claiming life has no meaning, no purpose, no direction, that it came from nothing, would make a Big Bang impossible. Nothing comes from nothing. I'm here, so I came from somewhere. Inbuilt within this place, I find myself cause and effect, pre-existing, ipso facto, design. Cause and effect, the pathway to perfecting practices, learning, and possibly life itself. Revolution, technological and worldly advancements and a perfection of our understandings as a species. Why such direction if merely all by sheer chance? We find it all highly compelling. such events as a pyroclastic flow, complete human forms can often be preserved in a fixed position, turned to ash in an instant. Someone turning into a stone fossil with age, however, was thought to be an impossible scenario. That was until 1898, when an extremely controversial discovery was made deep within a copper mine. Although several reports have surfaced over the years of this most peculiar of discoveries, only one has ever managed to stay around long enough to be officially documented. D. 
Deep within an old copper mine in Chukikamata, an ancient stone woman, complete with basket and tools, was discovered. And although a date of only 400 years was preliminarily given, it is clear to the many involved that she is far older than that. The discovery was examined closely by Jose Torobino Medina, a central figure in Chilean archaeology at the time. He described his findings as follows. The body is that of a female. The depth of the soil where the corpse was found was no more than 6 to 8 feet, and the miner was probably searching the mountain when a sudden collapse buried her. The miner, feeling that the mountain was breaking down, lifted her arms up to protect her head, the position in which her body is preserved. This discovery, although the only one of its kind, is highly controversial, and we suspect this may be because certain individuals are aware of its true antiquity. Beside the body were the remains of a basket, a stone sledgehammer, several stone shovels, sharpened pieces of wood, and a torn bag made of animal hide all leading to the conclusion that this mummy dates from a very distant time within our history. After more recent analysis was conducted, it was discovered that it was actually a man, strangely. He also has an unusually shaped skull, and a green hue from sulfate and chloride within the copper. It is thought this may have been one of the contributing factors in his marvelous preservation. The Copper Man of Chukwikamata is extremely difficult to research. And, although he is clearly of considerable historical importance, his whereabouts may continue to remain vague. Regardless of his known whereabouts, his existence will forever lend credence to a forbidden history here on our planet. <laughs>